you have to have an immense belief in yourself because you're gonna be kicked off the horse mm. <laughs> so much. This is part of the conversation. When people turn their passion of filmmaking into, into a business, it's like you have to eat. Most people can't out of the gate just do their passion projects and turn those into profit. And I think that that's important to like not forget uh, your other dreams or like why you are doing it in the first place, you know? On episode 375 of the podcast, we talk about strategies on pricing yourself as a director, how to avoid being pigeonholed and embrace new opportunities. And we also go over some practical advice for aspiring filmmakers looking to make an impact. What's up, my friend? It is Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and this is the Grow Your Video Business Show. This is where we talk to corporate commercial filmmakers about the business of video production. This is hard work, uh, and it's powerful. It is, it is important work, and you need to be able to do this work for as long as you feel called into it and not uh, get out of it because you haven't figured out how to be profitable, you haven't figured out how to get help. Uh, so I'm super glad that you're here. I've been doing this work for 20 years, uh, running my own video production studio for that long. Uh, I cannot believe, this is amazing. It, it, it is a gift, but it comes with lots and lots of challenges. So I'm excited to help you. Uh, that's that's my hope is that if I can help you stay in this work longer, uh, be more profitable, do more good in the world because of uh, just the benefits of running a, a healthy business, um, that's my hope. So glad you're here. If you're not happy with the clients that you're landing or the budgets that you're working with, you think they're too small or you just haven't figured out the business side of things, I wanna invite you to a free 45 minute workshop that I call the Six Figure Commercial Filmmaker Workshop where I give what I think is, well, it is my best advice. These are some of the things, the, these are the things that I have applied into my business uh, to make it run, to allow me to, uh, you know, have employees and to have uh, a sustainable and a scalable business. So you can get access to that workshop by going to studiosherpas.com slash workshop. That's studiosherpas.com slash slash workshop. There are actionable things to do in there. Um, I do talk about our Video Business Academy as an option, but just if you if you only watch the 45 minutes and uh, took notes, I promise you there's there are some nuggets in there that you can apply uh, even today. So grab it, studiosherpas.com slash workshop. Grab it, watch it, whatever. Um, so that's my gift to you. With that, let's get into today's episode. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today with me is Roxana Baldovin, who is a writer, director. She's a powerhouse. She's an actress. She's all of the things, and we're super excited to have her on the show today. Roxana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure. So. If you had to summarize, I know we were talking before we hit record, and I'm like, you know, how how, how to introduce your, yourself, and it's like, okay, all the things, right? But if 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 I had like, you know, 20 seconds with you, what would you say? How how do you spend your time? How do I spend my time? I spend my time um, writing and mm -hmm. performing, and obviously directing as well on set. But a lot of my time is spent like writing treatments or you know writing my scripts. Um, yeah. Pretty much writing is yeah. the main bulk of directing, actually, because you're actually on on set not as often as you're writing the things you're mm. going to be doing on set. So writing on my computer is most of the time. And then after you're after you have a project, then you're editing, you're in post. Even if yeah. you're not the one physically editing, you'll be in the editing room. So. Yes. Yes. We are familiar with the old, the old posts. Uh, that's like as we talk to as I have conversations with filmmakers all the time, it's like for people that are trying to turn this into a business, it's like if there was one area that you could get back some of your time, it's, it's like you got to find a good editor so you can just delegate 
uh, you know, so much of that. Yeah. Still have control if you want or need it, but uh, it's just so stinking time consuming. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. The best thing is to have, I like to look through my footage though, just so I know, because then you can better direct the editor, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's good to, to be familiar with your footage and then have someone take over. So then you can be like, actually, I remember we had this one shot and I like that better. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, also as you're listening, uh, we did, I did get clarity on this. Uh, there are no ghosts in Roxana's home. Uh, it is the wind, uh, in the Hills. So, uh, she's good. She's safe. Uh, please don't, do not worry about her. Uh, all is fine. So I can't remember. I wish I had this somewhere. Somebody must have said, you need to get her on the show. And so we looked you up. I looked at some of your work and I was like, holy cow, like, uh, this work is gorgeous. It's amazing. So uh, you do lovely, lovely work. Do you have, um, you know, in your career where it's at right now, um, would you say, what What would you say, like, if you had a claim to fame currently, what would you say that it is? My claim to fame um, is probably this video for Doja Cat um, called Tia Tamara. Um, that's probably the thing that I am most... Uh, recognized for is it my favorite thing i've done no but (laughs) which is why i'm like reluctantly answering it but that's usually how it goes i feel like the blockbuster hit is not usually your favorite thing you've done yeah well uh as soon as i ask that that question if you're not watching this uh this interview (laughs) as soon as i ask that question you've rolled your eyes and i'm like okay yep so sorry it wasn't uh, it wasn't for you (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. I, yeah. Well, it better not have been. We'll, we'll end this uh, interview really quick here. I'm just, I'm curious, you know, and we all have these, like, this is part of the conversation when people turn their passion of filmmaking into, into a business, it's like, you have to eat right at some level. So you can't, most people can't out of the gate, just do their passion projects and turn those into profit. So you have to do the projects that are just like, I mean, it is what it is. Like I, I've, I've got to eat. Uh, not all the things in this, in this career are going to be glamorous. So if you had to, you know, if there were parts of that, that particular project that if you had full, you know, creative controller, like what was the thing that you wished could have been different to really make it uh, to where it wasn't an eye roll? Uh, well, there were three scenes that we shot that got cut out. Um, and it was mainly because, like, she didn't like the way her hair looked or something mm. like that. But, like, they had the screen. Like, they had the, you know, like, they yeah. saw the feedback. So, right. oh, so that could have been fixed easily on set. Yep. Um, I mean, basically, the video was, like, 90s uh, style, like an homage to the 90s. And so I had her dressed up as Cameron, like in the all pink, you know, with the with mm-hmm. the baby mm-hmm. cat cell phone. And we had her dressed up as Eve with like the paw print tattoos. And then there was a third one. Oh, little Kim. She was wearing the purple little Kim outfit. And so it would have been really cool to have those like cultural references. But, you know, people still love the video and they gravitate towards it. Um, I think also like I watched it recently. I used to be super proud of it and I used to think it was yeah. so amazing. But I think that my personal style and taste has changed as well because that video yeah. was four years ago now. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that I am really proud of it and I think we did really great work. But, uh, you know, it's very bright and very saturated. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I think that I think it's also just a, and I think that that kind of dictated like the type of work I did afterwards as well mm-hmm. that people are hiring me. Yeah. You know, as much as you don't want to be pigeonholed, uh, we get pigeonholed. And so I think that as much as you should say yes to everything in the beginning, uh, which I think regardless at that time in my life, I would have said yes to it. So it's not this was something I wanted to do at the time and I was really into it. It's just we have to be careful of navigating the pigeonhole, I guess, because it's always going to be a pigeonhole to claw ourselves out of. And it's crazy because, you know, that happens even on the biggest scale. You know, yeah. we don't we don't get out of that. So I remember I saw a talk with Eva Longoria at the DGA, um, the Directors Guild, and Eva Longoria directed her first feature film. She directed Flaming Hot. But, um, you know, she was directing television for 12 years. She's an A-list actress. And to even get that film, she had to, you know, fight claw, tooth, and nail to get that film because she needed to be 
you know, she needed to take herself out of the box of television directing. So the the pigeonhole, the clawing ourselves out of the pigeonhole never really ends. Right. <laughs> we have right. to be prepared for that at every yeah. stage, basically. Well, like the beautiful thing about what you're saying is there there is we can all we all look at our old work and we're all I mean, most of the time it's like, oh, my gosh, it's it's terrible. Right. And we point out all the things that we don't like. But like in the moment, we made those decisions because we believed in them. Right. So like our past self, like this is the coolest opportunity I've had. This is the, the best footage I've gotten. This is the coolest piece I've ever worked on. That was all true. Right. But then we grow. We change our style, change our aesthetic changes. We we gravitate toward other things because of other experiences and things that we're experiencing, and and then you know and then we look back and you know unfortunately sometimes and I'm so guilty of this to to be embarrassed or to just like oh my gosh like that's the it's the worst but like oh my gosh like I wouldn't be the person today if I didn't do that job. Right. So, so to even hear you processing through, I can hear the gratitude toward like, yeah, like that was a, that, there was plenty of goodness that was in there. And when we finished it, I was proud of it. Um, but I totally get the, you know, the eye roll like I, you know, there's plenty of that, too. And the challenge, exactly what you're saying, this whole idea of getting pigeonholed, that is tough. Um, one of the things that I kind of coach our filmmaking students through is don't put your most recent work on your website that you're that you don't want to do more of don't put any work on your website that you don't want to work more or to do more of because that's how you pigeonhole that's one way to right. pigeonhole yourself um and i would imagine part of you being pigeonholed at least for that that period of time was because other people that you were working with people that saw the video and said like yes that's what we want we want you know who did this okay let's find oh it's Roxana okay yep we'll have her do this and then in the meantime you're just like I, I've got another vision a different vision for what I want to be able to do but that's just that's just how it happens right exactly so I did a black and white video earlier last year um, which you know like a label would have never hired before um, it was for G Easy but you know I met G Easy out and about and. You know, I was really grateful for that opportunity. Always, by the way, if you see people uh, that you want to work with out in the wild or even it doesn't even need to be in the wild. You know, you could want to DM, DM someone on social media or whatever. And the worst that could happen is that they don't respond. Yeah. But, you know, maybe you will get a response and then you'll be able to work with them. So uh, I'm really grateful to G for that experience because, you know, a label would have never seeked me out to do a black and white video. Mm. And he took a chance on me. And that's, yeah. you know, one of the videos I'm most proud of. And so, you know, that was an ability to showcase something else that I am capable of. And, you know, I'm really grateful for that, for that video, because it's like so different from the like hyper stylized, saturated world. <laughs> right. that I it's like complete opposite, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's cool. So there's a stigma. Hopefully this doesn't get awkward, but there's a stigma when it comes to uh, music videos. And do you know what the stigma is? That, that I'm going to bring up? Uh, music, I don't know, but one stigma is that, you know, a music director can't do narrative. Okay, well, that's interesting. Okay. Well, uh, what, that's what, not, what? well, the stigma is that you can't make money. Like, oh, hardly... That's, what, hard, that's not true. Okay, so bash that myth for us, please. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, it's more that there's very few people making good money off of music videos. Yeah. You know, um, so it's about breaking that barrier. Mm -hmm. to getting well you know i know some music video directors that don't get out of bed for less than seven hundred fifty thousand, and they're killing it so <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. well what is that like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars like what is that what what is somebody getting from a director is that like 000. what's that so, seventy five thousand. Oh, seventy five thousand. 75 okay okay so you made, different you made 10 percent of the budget okay. i mean ideally or like you know, there's been many times where, you know, you believe in the vision, they don't have the budget. You're like, OK, I'll give you 2K off mine and then they'll take it. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just about getting and also like the more thirty thousand dollar videos you take, the more you're going to be in that 30, which is not a lot, by the way. Yep. If you're yep. in the thirty thousand dollar range, then you're going to continue being in the thirty thousand dollar range. Yep. Another way we get pigeonholed. Yep. So, um, you know, as much as you sometimes like you don't want to say no because you want you not only want, but like you need the money. <laughs> right. But also, 
it's like it's actually more beneficial to say no because then they're going to respect you more to give you that hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar opportunity next time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's just say let's just play this out maybe a little bit. Say say there's a half a million dollar opportunity that comes away. It's like and uh, that's the budget for the the whole project, right? So budget yeah. half a million. Uh, director gets ten percent of that, fifty thousand dollars. How much? If, if we could kind of equate to like roughly how much time do you think mentally sitting down writing and just doing the whole thing like how, roughly how, because because for some pe people fifty thousand dollars is like well shoot that's like a that's an okay salary for a whole year I I don't you know it's just like where we live like eh, it's not like I need like two or three maybe four of those for for me to be like oh yeah cool but you know are there enough hours in the day for for that to, to happen so um yeah so that's really interesting because. It's really hard to equate our time, especially yeah. because, you know, there's you asked me what I do most of the time. And, you know, a lot of the times you're writing and you're not getting paid for your writing. And right. it's not necessarily like, like, you know, my mom likes to joke like, oh, you could have written like, you know, five feature films by now because of, of how much work I put into like videos yeah. that don't get made or whatever. But it's also that gamble of like, well, this could be my big break. And, you know, right. so then you yep. kind of want that opportunity. But. Yeah, so there's a lot of unpaid work, but let's say if you're just including one project from start to finish, I would say, you know, it could vary. Sometimes a treatment can take a day. Sometimes it could take four or five days um, in terms of like, you know, you need to sit with it. You need to marinate your idea. You need to go find references. You need to put together the treatment, whatever. I like lately I've been chat GPTing my words as well. And it's actually insane because you think that you're writing well, but then you'll go into ChatGPT and you'll write, make this sound better. And then you'll, <laughs> you'll copy and paste your words and you're like, wow. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a I, dummy. <laughs> I, I like to marry it because sometimes a ChatGPT sounds ridiculous. Oh, also. for sure. Like yeah. it sounds hyper intelligent or like a little too much. So you kind of have to like mix, mix it. But the ChatGPT does help. But I would say, so let's say two days, let's say three days of writing, then you have, you get the job. Okay. So then you have yeah. pre pro pre pro will be, um, a couple weeks, a week or two, you know, yep. sometimes like we need to shoot this in five days and you're right, like, right, right. when those five days are go speed, hectic as yeah. all hell, but a good time frame would be about two weeks that you have. And obviously you're not working eight hours a day. This is why it's right. hard to use your time. Cause it's like, yep. you're not working eight hours a day on it, but like you still need to be on call for those two weeks, right? Yep. Then you have one or two days of actual set. And then you're going to have another two weeks in post. But sometimes like that Doja Cat video, that was three months of post. Yeah. So, wow. you know, but I would say it's about a month of work. Yeah. About yeah, a start month. to finish. Yeah. Okay. And, and even for like a, a $30,000 project and a, and a $750,000 project, it's, yep. it's probably roughly ish. The That's same. what's crazy. Exactly. So um, a lot of times I've been commissioning um, anything like less than 30 K um, depending. I mean, you know, some, sometimes I'll commission more, but if it's less than $30,000, usually I'll commission it. So if someone hits me up and they, they want a video, I'm like, I'm not going to do this, but I'll um, I can recommend someone and then I'll EP it and I'll end up making the same amount of money as the person that's directing it. And they're working like, <laughs> And like, all I'm doing is being like, hey, here. That's and like, the business. Overseeing it. Right. But, yeah, you know, so. And, you know, you have to get to a certain place for like, number one, for them to trust that you're going to have someone that's going to do a good job. Number two. And so, like, sometimes I'll feel bad, but it's like, no, that person needs that opportunity. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I need that. I would like some money right now while I'm right. working on things. So it, it's good, you know. Well, and like people can say no, right? If you if you try passing something along to somebody, they don't have to say yes. So if if, right. if, if, if it's the right well, opportunity was, for them. There was a time in my life when I got, when I would love to get a $30,000 $30, video, you know? So yeah, exactly. You know, we're all at different places in our yeah. career trajectories. And, you know, like some people, like, you know, the videos that I'm doing right now, I'm like right now in the like 75 lower to like 400 500 range right yeah and it's like to some people that's really low budget 
But, yeah. you know, so it's like, and then hopefully one day I'm going to look at that as low budget as well. Because there was one point where like, and like, I know that like, and by the way, those like bigger six figure numbers are more for my commercials. The yeah. music videos are still like, it's true. Like in, in order. So yeah, I do know like the group of people that are really successful in, well, I guess they also do commercials, but yeah, there, there, it's very few people that are like doing those like you know, quarter million dollar music videos on the regular, you know, um, mm -hmm. my one was $300,000, but you know, that was like over like, so that I didn't necessarily make 30,000. Um, cause it went over budget, you know, like the label yeah. gave 200,000 and then like G spent like 80 of his own money on it because he was passionate, yeah. which that doesn't happen a lot either, you mm -hmm. know, but you know, just to get the Eiffel cause we, we shot it in Paris just to oh, get wow. the Eiffel. So just to shoot the Eiffel Tower with its blinking lights at night is $20,000. And the label didn't want to pay that, but she was like, we need that in the video. So he paid it, you know? Oh, wow. Um, and then something like that also comes with having a personal relationship with the artist. Because, like, if I didn't have a personal relationship with him, then uh, I, it would be out of the question to even ask yeah. the artist. You know, like, people are very protective over the artist. But... Um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's all relative. It's always all, all relative, you know? Yeah. But and stuff. I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, as we were talking about all the, all the, all the things that you're doing, you've got a documentary that you're working on. You've got a TV show that you're working on. Are you able to, let's just say a, you know, $750,000 music video popped up right now and you took it like are, are you able to juggle all of those at the same time you do kind of do you kind of have to hit pause on one while you're focused on the other how does how does that work uh so right now i'm in development on my tv show uh meaning that you know i i pretty much am shopping it around right now to get it green lit um i may shoot the pilot myself i have um another meeting um in a couple of weeks and we're gonna see what they say um, in terms of like, if I should be shooting it on my own or not, because I hear differing things about it. Yeah. But you know, that's kind of just like, I, I'm just shopping it right now. So I'm not necessarily actively working on it because I'm just kind of like, my job is almost, it's not, it's, it's done because I'm just like waiting to get all the right. eggs in the basket of like, who wants to sign on? Yeah. Um, my documentaries and post. So I do have to shoot more for it. Um, again, I'm like, you know, getting some funding from producers. Yeah. So if I were to get, I, I think it's possible to to juggle it all because I do juggle it all anyways. Because like, yeah. for example, I wrote a music video. I wrote three videos last week, you know. And so when an opportunity comes my way, if it's like a good one, I'm going to take it. And, you know, sometimes you're not going to get it. Sometimes you're going to get it. So it really just depends. Uh, the thing that I'm like most working on every day that like is not really on a back burner of any sorts is uh, my one woman show. And my mm. one woman show is so basically it is my TV show, but made for the stage, kind of like Fleabag. Oh, cool. So Fleabag was a TV show, but before it's before it was a TV show it was a one woman show. And so I I'm taking her model and mm. reverse engineering it because I already wrote the TV show, but that I'm, I'm creating it for the stage. And so I'm going to be performing it at fringe in June and I've already signed up for it. And so oh, man. yeah, I'm doing groundlings twice a week, uh, improv school. And I am, you know, my solo, I have a solo coach for my one woman show. I have an intensive with her tonight. And so I'm just kind of going after the things that make me happy that I might've like put on the back burner a little bit when yeah. I was like, really going full force on yeah. the directing. And I think that that's important to like, not forget uh, your other dreams or like why you are doing it in the first place, you know? Yeah. So like, which is the same thing to with my TV show and with my um, documentary and with all my, like sh I have a short that I'm working on that, you know, is going to also, there's like some sort of a grant for it and it's due. I like having deadlines because when I have yeah. deadlines, yeah. when you good. have deadlines, then Cause you know, sometimes you'll like let something you'll like, I've looked at my goals and I'm like, wow, I've had the same goals for three years <laughs> because you just like let them, let them sit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so 
I so I'm writing this short with a with a writer that you know writes for Amazon and Netflix, and she has all these big things, but she wants to get more into producing, and so she saw my uh, short and she was like, "Oh, I love this. I can get us money for this." She recently sent me a um a, like basically it's a grant and it's due on the 28th. So now that I know it's due on the 28th, I'm not going to yeah. put that film on the back burner because I have a due date. Yeah. So the due dates really help. And sometimes you have to give yourself your own due dates too. Mm -hmm. But it's harder to keep those in line. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, when you don't have somebody else like this woman, like she's going to be like, dude, like uh, it's two right. days. Like where's it at? Uh, exactly. But when it's just you, it's like, nah, I could push that back. Like, you know, I got other things I need to do too. Yeah, so I, I think that there's, um I think that for me at least, like every week is different in terms of like what I put my focus on. Yeah. In terms of like... There might be a week where like our, you know, the documentary is full steam ahead. And so I'm focused fully on that right now. Like I do have to I'm going to meet with the editor one more time um, before we like start uh, shooting more, you know. But yeah, it's like every week might look slightly different because some things you're working like 70 percent on and others are like 30 percent. Other weeks it's like 50 50 or, yeah. you know, so. I love that. What when you and you said the word dream just a little bit ago, when you're thinking about like what is what is the dream? Like let's just say like you've got everything is in motion and maybe it are maybe you're you are currently like living the dream, but is there anything that you're aspiring toward, anything that you'd be able to say like, Oh, I achieved it, like I got it. This is this is amazing. Yeah, my dreams are a bit more long term because I do. I would like to be an EGOT, and um, I need to win a VMA before I stop making music videos. So I am really like accolade based, and I know that yeah. that's like good, but it's not the unfortunate uh, reality. <laughs> um, but no, right now, right now, my closest uh, dream goal is you know making this hit TV show and getting an Emmy, getting like Emmy nominated, Emmy winning, like. I'm really focused on my TV show right now. Seeing yeah. the billboards, you know, my whole house is, I don't know if you could see, but like there's lots of Sunset Strip billboards. Oh, in. yeah. So, you know, I'd love to see a billboard. My show is called Manic. I'd like to see a billboard for Manic. Um, but yeah, getting Manic, like full steam ahead, being on that award stage, being with the greats, like that's, and starring in it, starring in it. That's yeah. something yeah. I really need to do. And um, yeah. I will, and you know, I think that I made some choices in my past that uh, didn't necessarily align with that, and so now I'm kind of having to work like ten times as hard. But we're gonna make it happen. Love I it. like household name, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I did just watch the Tyler Perry documentary. Have you have you seen that? No. What is it called? I didn't even know we had one. Uh oh, man, it's like uh, a nod to his mom. Her name is in the title, and then it's like. A Tyler Perry story or Tyler Perry story oh. or something like that. Really powerful. Um, a lot of similarities, even as you're as you're kind of sharing. Um, but a lot of the stuff that he's achieved, uh, I didn't realize how much uh, he had done. And uh, I mean, he kind of is a household name. And um, oh, he's definitely def a household. Yeah, definitely worth watching. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's so good. Uh, this episode is not sponsored by Amazon, though. <laughs> a couple, couple of I name drops. <laughs> yeah, cause um, I feel, um, yeah, yeah. Like I like, I like, uh, I definitely will watch that because I do like the fact that he's, um, you know, not only behind the camera, he's in front of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may or may not have shed a few tears. Uh, it's a powerful story. It's really beautiful. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's good. Um, if you had to kind of, uh, you know, think through the best decisions that you've made in your career to kind of. You know, if you were going to mentor somebody else uh, and say, like, hey, consider uh, this. This was one of the best moves that I did or this is one of the smartest things that you should consider as you're you know, thinking through your own career. What what might be like one piece of advice or something that you feel like has been uh, a game changer for you? If you want to be a director, be a director. So mm -hmm. I see that a lot of people I know get pigeonholed again um like you know there's some people that they uh they're not sure what they want to do in the industry so they kind of do everything and then they realize they're really good at editing and yeah. so they start editing falling into editing and then one day they're like i really want to direct but guess what mm -hmm. 
You're an editor. And it's sad because it's it's much harder to get that opportunity when you're known as an editor. Mm. You know, and I see a lot of friends of mine struggling in that way, like whether they're a production designer or an editor or a DP. For DPs, it's a bit easier because you're like, you know, you could be a DP and a director. But either way, yeah, I think that once you're known as something, you're known as something. So yeah. you have your eyes set on a prize. Don't try to be a hero and a jack of all trades because to be honest, in this industry, being a jack of all trades doesn't really help you. If you're trying to be more in the, it depends. Cause you know, if you're doing like wedding videos or something like that, then obviously you want to shoot, edit, whatever. But if you're, if you're trying to do more like, um, you know, films or music videos or commercials or whatever, then you probably want to focus on one discipline more and get a great team to do the rest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I'm thinking about like, n- Obviously, you know, everything that I hear, people are like, well, you know, I'm making the move to Hollywood. I had a guy that worked for me a few years ago that moved to Hollywood because he's like, I want to, you know, I want to take a stab at it. And a lot of opportunities come through relationship, probably most opportunities, your network, who who you're hanging out with, uh, who you're, um, you know, just becoming friends with or, or at least just trying to help out and all that stuff. Is there is there anything else that you feel like? Or, or anything you can speak into about that for somebody that is kind of, they're stuck or they're like, I'm not sure what move to take. I want to be a director. Uh, where do I go? What do I do? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I definitely think I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. So like I was already from a big hub of the world and still moving to LA changed my career a lot. Mm. So I do think that being, if you're really serious about it, I think you have to be in LA. Or if not LA, then Atlanta, maybe Miami or New York, you know, but like, I think that, you know, because inevitably everyone around you is also going to be in the industry. So like your, your network, you know, every party I go to, and this happens way, it's crazy because when I'm home in New York, uh, most people in New York, uh, they have nine to fives or they have something else. Whereas, and it's really surprising to me, actually, like it's not really so much as much of a hub. Whereas here, it's like everybody's a full-time creative. And so, yeah. you know, that just helps to be around that. And, you you know, one person knows one person who knows one person. And so, yeah, I think being in L.A. is super important. Um, mm. But separate of that, also, you know, cold emailing people, DMing people, um, not being afraid of rejection because you're going to get rejected a thousand times and it's not personal, you know. Um, but I think that knowing that just you have to have an immense belief in yourself because you're going to be kicked off the horse mm. <laughs> so much, yeah. you know, but also you just can't be afraid. Like, you know, like I saw G, it was funny. So when I met G, G Z, I I was at a concert and I was getting stood up by a guy and guy. It was, I know, well, it's really yeah, funny yeah. because with me, guess what? I would have never went up to G and I met my current boyfriend and the love of my life through G. <laughs> so awesome. it's just funny how the universe works. But um, when I saw G, so I was really upset about this guy at this concert. I was like, I can't believe he'd stand me up. Yeah. And, and then I saw G from the corner of my eye and I laughed to myself because I was like, this is the universe giving me an opportunity and I have to take it. And so the whole night after that kind of came about like me approaching him and I didn't really approach him till the end of the night, you know, but, and I texted him like four times by the way, before we finally met up. So like my persistence was like very like on it, you know? And now I I have a tattoo of the Eiffel tower because so that video was, Uh, it was, it was my first time shooting in Europe and I did that all myself. I made that opportunity for myself. And so I think that recognizing when the universe is giving you something. And so if you see a famous person or not even necessarily someone famous, it could just be someone like an editor you love or like if you see someone that you want to work with, don't be too shy to go up to them because, you know, like just, you know, swallow, take a deep breath and go up to them and introduce yourself because you never know like how much that can influence the rest of your life. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And I've had 
times. I mean, you know, I saw Louis Tomlinson, which is like the lamest One Direction, right? I saw him. <laughs> at a bar. I don't even know his music, to be honest, but I still went up to him. He was like, oh, talk to my talk to my tour manager. And his tour manager was his bus driver. Or like, I don't know. They were just kind of making fun of me with the whole situation. <laughs> Jeez. And so, you know, there's going to be times where it's not going to work, but it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. like take every if the universe is putting someone in your path know that they're doing that for a reason. So take yeah. that as a, as a visual key from the universe. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think we get stuck in our heads and think like, oh, what's what's going to happen? Like, oh, I'll make a fool of myself. It's like, hey, if you make a fool of yourself, what? maybe next time you won't make as much of a fool of yourself. And the opportunities, uh, they're, they're not going to happen on, on their own, right? So uh, setting the stage and taking action, uh, I think that's a good piece of advice. Uh, what am I like? We're kind of getting toward the end here, and I don't want to leave uh, without like. What am I not asking you that you're just like? Oh, I want to share this. This is like this is on my heart and needs to be said. I don't know. Um, I think okay. So uh, I was on that show on HBO, Project Greenlight, and you know, so I was picked out of six thousand uh, women to be on that show. I was the only music video director oh. on that show, and you know, um, I. I feel as though uh, I was really confident and I think that confidence is key in the world regardless. And I feel as though my confidence was maybe like a little bit, I was kind of sad at the way that it was portrayed in that mm -hmm. show only because I feel like, you know, women especially are taught to like, you know, humble themselves and be, and you know, I don't know, like not really shine bright or be yeah. big and loud and, you know, I wasn't trying to make myself seem bigger than anyone else. I was just believing in myself. And yeah. I hope that that inspires everyone to believe in themselves that large and that big. Mm -hmm. And so, um, well, number one, watch it. Number, yeah. Watch me on HBO. Um, number two, um, yeah, you know, just like be confident in yourself and, you know, don't be afraid to express yourself super loudly. And if someone else like gets turned off by that, that's their own projection of how they feel about themselves. You know what I mean? So yeah. just like get large and go after your dreams. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, always. Yeah. Just, I feel, you know, it's never too late to uh, go for what you really want in this world. And yes. I think that, you know, don't get lost in the sauce either. Or if you find yourself getting lost in the sauce, um, you know, just drip dry yourself out of there and continue onward. Because I feel like uh, I got a little lost in the sauce. And obviously, you know, I've done like some I'm super proud of the work I've done and, yeah. you know, my career. And I know I recognize that. And, you know, I didn't have any connections to this world at all. And I really did fight like tooth and nail um to be anywhere in here so i am super proud of my journey and the things i've yeah. done but um you know it's easy to get lost in in it when you're in it and then yeah. one day you're like wait whoa uh i have my own stories to tell i have my own voice i have my own mm -hmm. vision yeah. and um you know it sometimes it could be really like eye-opening you're like whoa you know how did i get here and do all of these things and not do those these other things that I wanted to do for myself. And so just, you know, it's never too late to wake up and and conquer your own your own voice, basically. Yeah. And also we have social media now. And so, you know, we can always be the social media is like the best tool for number one, meeting people, number two, getting your voice out there, like yeah. telling your story. So, you know, you could be in Alaska listening to this and, you know, your story can be absolutely told from Juno. You know, you don't need to be in L.A. to tell a story anymore. Yeah. As much yeah. as I said, you move here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you're looking at career and like all that stuff like that, that's different. Uh, so I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, that's powerful. Thanks for all the <laughs> all those nuggets started right then there. That was really good. Uh, oh, okay. How can people connect with you and follow along with all the incredible stuff that you're up to? Um, they could follow me on Instagram, Senora Directora, so S E N O R A, director with an A, on Instagram, and I think on YouTube it's the same. Um, I am posting some stuff on YouTube now, and yeah, TikTok as well. You know, all the platforms. Instagram is definitely my main platform, though. So, yeah, say hello. 
I love it. Roxana, thank you so much for sharing today. Very inspirational. Um, really appreciate it and uh, excited for all the things that you've got going on uh, for the show, for the documentary, um, hoping uh, for the same success that you're hoping for yourself. Uh, so Thank appreciate you it. Thank you so much. Um, and if anyone is in Hawaii or uh, Arizona and wants to be a part of the film crew for my documentary, um, reach out because we're looking. There we go. I like it. Get her, send her a DM on Instagram. Exactly. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. Uh, again, Roxana, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. All right, friend, you can get show notes from this episode by going to studiosherpas.com slash 375. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook and you have a takeaway, if you had an aha moment, please let me know. Or you can email me your takeaway or your aha moments, ryan at studiosherpas.com. I would love to hear from you. Seriously, uh, this can feel like a one-sided relationship. So let me know that you're there. Let me know that this is helpful. If there's any topics or guests that you think I should have on the show, please make those recommendations. Um, follow me on, on the Instagrams at Ryan Coral. It's K-O-R-A-L or at Grow Your Video Business. Um, would be great to see you on there. Thanks for being here. This is fun. This has been, this has been fun uh, today. And I will see you on next week's episode. Sound good? Okay. Bye for now.